New tropical signals for the Pacific and Indian Oceans on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for June 4th. Well, we have no tropical cyclones active anymore with the dissolution of Arlene, a remnant low now near the coast of Cuba, and what's left of Typhoon Mawa, which is about to merge with another extratropical cyclone well off the coast of Japan, moving towards the Ocean Island chain way up north. It's day four of Atlantic hurricane season, and apart from what's left of Arlene, uh, there's a big long slew of clouds um, populating the open Atlantic Ocean. Not much will occur from all of that, but certainly a very uh, um, interesting picture, an unsettled picture across the ocean. Day 21 in the Eastern Pacific and things are comparatively very quiet. The main <coughs> area of the ocean there being uh, pretty much devoid of any activity, and even the intertropical convergence zone is a little bit quiet right now, with only a few thunderstorms dotted around the place. In the Western Pacific, we do now have a 40% chance behind Moa, uh, which is not far from the Mariana Islands. Latest suggestions are it'll be a little bit further west and shouldn't particularly affect Guam and the neighboring islands, so that should be some good news. And in the Indian Ocean, we now have a 50% chance of a potential system forming in the Arabian Sea. Really strong signals this evening from the GFS and ECMWF models, the European one one being strongest at 919 millibars, but we're not going to take that at face value just yet. Satellite imagery of the last 24 hours looks like this, and you can see uh, the lack of footprint from Arlene, extremely little convection, hardly registering at all on this imagery. And over there in the Indian Ocean, looks like we're getting the strongest tropical signals there right now from a few disturbances. Well, here is Arlene on the latest visible satellite imagery. Still quite clear to see the cyclonic vortex, uh, but convection is so little that we can't call it a tropical cyclone anymore. It's a remnant low with just its low level circulation naked. Uh, and gradually swirling towards the coast of Cuba with only light winds up to about 30 miles per hour still in some spots uh, but generally fairly light especially in the south and southwestern sides and here is Invest 98W which I believe is the system that we have tagged as well very close to Yap right now would be the center of it if it had a uh, designated center that was clear there uh, but convection blowing up either side of that central region um, not far from Yap convection blowing up just to the south and southeast uh, could get some significant rainfall it's clearly got a long way to go before it becomes tropical cyclone if it gets there at all we're keeping it at 40% which might be a little bit low in some people's eyes but it's due to uncertainty quite big uncertainties over its potential track Sea surface temperatures are looking good in the eastern Pacific with very warm temperatures now reaching 32 degrees off some parts of the coast of Mexico, uh, although quite cooler out at sea. In the Atlantic, the Gulf Stream looking pretty good as well as the loop current there in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, very warm waters now reaching the coast of Texas and Louisiana up above 28 degrees Celsius. Caribbean looking good, the main development region getting up to speed as well. Western Pacific still recovering from the big hole that uh, Typhoon Mawa caused and that might uh, be a factor in this next system although I might suggest probably not it will probably move a little bit further towards the east there and take advantage of 29 to 30 degrees Celsius waters uh, for a little while Indian Ocean looking pretty hot as well Arabian Sea very much so 32 degrees at least in some spots and the Bay of Bengal not too far behind there with very warm sea surface temperatures across the board Southern Hemisphere basins, not too much to talk about in these areas, still quite cool now in the off season in the Southern Hemisphere generally, still can't rule out the odd system that might form here in the off season period, uh, but we'll be back again with more on that as the new season starts around about late October. 
And here's the sea surface temperature anomalies again, that big crater caused by Typhoon Mawar in the western Pacific, but the rest of the basin is slightly above average. Eastern Pacific is hot and cold, uh, the main area of development though is above average, the Atlantic same too, uh, although a little bit of coolness now in the area where Arlene was relative to average, uh, the subtropical zones quite warm in the Atlantic and Pacific as well. Uh, oceanic heat content is building gradually over there in the uh, Caribbean Sea and over part of the Gulf of Mexico as well, uh, but the hotspot still is to the east of uh, the Yucatan Peninsula. Eastern Pacific still has one or two little spots, but to be honest it's been stagnating for a little bit. Western Pacific though is still looking very good and it will build back in again uh, the area where Mawawas took a lot of energy out of that zone early on in this season. Computer models then, this is what the GFS has in store for the next five days. This is just one of the many models, uh, the only one that we can actually properly show you on graphics. And it depicts one system at least, maybe a second one up towards the northeast there, uh, well to the east of the northern Mariana Islands. Uh, but looking in at that first system, looks like it develops into a tropical storm within that five day period, but the GFS not really fully committed on that just yet. Arabian Sea, looking at this system as well, GFS is much more set on this one and so is the ECMWF. Curiously, other models like the CMC and the ICON are completely uninterested in this system, uh, but there's the GFS solution getting up to category 3 probably within that 5 day period, certainly becoming rather strong. GFS forecasting a, a category 4 at peak probably, ECMWF calling for a borderline category 5. Uh, so we'll have to see what happens, the system hasn't even formed yet, so I would not speculate as to its peak intensity. And looking at rainfall concentrations in that western pacific region as well now the gfs has shifted just slightly further west which means that guam won't get as much rainfall as earlier anticipated we we're looking at probably about eight inches at least uh, but now it's just outside of that big um increase in the contours there palau there nearly at four inches 100 millimeters guam nearly at five just over 100 millimeters and saipan at three inches 100 and uh, sorry, 75 millimeters and 10 inches over there for Yap by the looks of things. That's quite a lot, 250 millimeters, but nowhere near what's near the center. 51 inches projected as that system stalls for quite a bit as it gets its energy up. So that is an incredible amount of rainfall there, uh, but thankfully not over any land areas. Longer range, day 5 to 10, what else happens with this system? Well it gradually moves northwards, strengthening as it starts to pick up speed and there it is peaking as it continues pretty much completely northwards, uh, probably getting to category 3 and then starting to recurve northeastwards, being sucked up by a front uh, as it's moving through Japan there uh, and it won't affect the main Japanese islands but of course some of those outlying islands that often get visited by typhoons like the Ogasawara island chain could get a direct hit from that one uh, as a category one or two. Here's the Arabian Sea system. Grows in strength, category four there. Gradual movement north, northwestwards, and then it starts to turn a little bit further towards the west, and look how far it gets before it weakens. It pretty much reaches the eastern tip of Oman there, round about the uh, 10 day mark. Uh, before continuing westwards. The uh, ECMWF model, by the way, takes it into the western coast of Pakistan as a similar strength storm, category two at least. Uh, that's the serious stuff done with. You can scan the barcode and take a look at the Force 13 merch store with all of our usual items, as well as our still waiting for Hone t-shirt. You can also uh, ask for uh, full season individual storm animations on request on there as well. Silly range then, this system stalls for a little bit off the coast of Oman and then finally makes landfall and moves over the United Arab Emirates, would you believe? That's something I don't think we've seen on a model run before in the many years that we've been doing this. And gradually continuing westwards over the Arabian Peninsula, over the desert basically, weakening out and dying off. That is very long range at this moment, uh, but it certainly is a possibility. Uh, especially considering storms that have done somewhat similar things in the past, thinking about Gonu and Mikunu. 
You can talk about all of that and many other things on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13 for tropical weather and general chat around the world. And speaking of which, June the 4th, 2007 was the day of Gonu, which peaked as a Category 5 in the Arabian Sea, continuing to power itself northwestwards. Got very close, if not a landfall, I can't quite remember now, on Oman before continuing northwards and then affecting the coast of Iran and Pakistan as a weakening storm. Certainly a legendary one in that part of the world, peaking on this day as a Category 5, very powerful. And I don't think it was matched in that basin until we saw uh, Kiar in 2019. I think that was the right one. Anyways, uh, in the Atlantic, the next name on the list is Brett. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Adrian. And in the Central Pacific, it's Hone. Of course, still is Hone. 20 storms so far this year. Over in the Western Pacific, the next name now is Guchol. And in the North Indian Ocean, it is Bipar Joy, which would be the next name in that Arabian Sea if we do get that system. The Southwest Indian Ocean will flip over to a new naming list on July the 1st, but until then the next name is Gizani, Australian region, Jasper, and the South Pacific, Lola. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.